Hello, hello. Give me one second. I'll take my hair down. Awesome. And I'm sorry, like fixing my hair. Take that shit out of that bun. Right, guys? Hello, hello. Let me give that everybody else about a minute before we go ahead and start. I'm excited to see everybody here. If you want to type hello in the comment section, you can. We do have a little bit of stuff to get through today. I'm really excited about it. Um, I have my outline already, and it's going to be a good show. I'm really excited. So I'm going to take a swip of water, and then we're going to go ahead and start at 604. Mm -mm -mm. Num, num, num. Perfect. So I want to welcome everyone here to the Grow Wealthy Grooming weekly show at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays. As you know, right now it is actually 6 p.m. And that is because I have an interview I'm doing with someone. I won't mention who, but I'm doing an interview for Savvy Groomer. And unfortunately, because of that, I have to be here at 6, which is great because I'm still here. Um, for those of you guys that are not already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. That helps us potentially eventually be able to monetize this. And as you know, uh, video editing and everything that I do for free does cost money on the other end. My video editor is almost $700 a month. So if we could ever monetize this channel, that would be great. So please like, subscribe, comment. That'd be super helpful, guys. So let's begin with this week's topic. And I'm going to pull up my notes and I'll probably put on some glasses too. And I'm losing my voice a little bit. So if I sound a little hoarse, I want to apologize in advance. So this week's topic is preparing for the holiday rush. You might be like, what does that even mean? And we'll get into that. But this is going to be the perspective from the employees. Last week, we had a great time doing it from a business owner's perspective. I think it's so important to talk about not just being a business owner, but for those of you guys that are employees, or if you are a business owner and you have employees, I want you to think about these things for your employees because building a great culture is so important. Let me go putting the glasses on and feel free, like I said, to add any comments or questions that you have. I'm here for you guys and I want to make sure you have the best possible time. Okay, so let's talk first about stocking up. I know we talked about this in the last video, but what's important for an employee to stock up on, depending upon how your business is run, would be, let's be honest, make sure your stuff is in good working orders, blades, clippers, make sure your stuff is sharpened. If it isn't sharpened already, and we're almost at Thanksgiving now, make sure that you go out and you order a bunch of new blades. And you might be like, why? And it's very simple. If you do a ton of once a year shave downs, or because you're not sure what's on the books, or a dog comes in matted, or you drop your blades, or your you know, fellow coworker drops an entire box of your blades, which has happened to me. You need to have extras. Um, in some shops, you're very blessed and you have coworkers that'll lend you stuff. The shop may have their very own blades and extra things like that, but not everyone does. And I, you know, used to be a bit of a scissor hoarder. Thankfully, the cacker may not have to do a lot of scissor hoarding, but make sure you have everything within working order because you don't want to be doing all of those grooms with stuff that's not working. Change your blade drive if you have an andis. You know, send out your clippers if you have a spare clipper. You know, make sure the other one is in good working order. Make sure everything that you may need between now and Christmas is done. Most people will try to send it out after Thanksgiving to get it back the last two weeks before uh, Christmas. And everyone does that. So everyone's like, oh, I'll just send it out right after Thanksgiving. It's great, but everyone has that idea. And if you do that and your sharpness backlogged, either A, if they're rushing through everyone, they're not going to do a great job. Or worse, they may not even get you your stuff back. I would rather have most of my stuff sharpened and some of it like, oh, this isn't great, versus not even getting my stuff back until after Christmas which a lot of sharpeners simply cannot help because everyone has the same idea to do that. So, and I would make sure you're buying spare things of your blades that you use often. Um, I'm a cat groomer. I mainly use 10s and 30s. In fact, that's the only two blades I use uh, besides my Bavura stuff. But when I was a dog groomer, I used a lot of a three blade. 
I don't know why. It was just a length everyone loved. So if you use a lot of those blade lengths, use that. If you are more of a seven strip kind of shop or you do a lot of seven strips on goldens and things like that, make sure you have extras. And if you have to order them, don't order them the day before, even if Amazon Prime promises one to two day shipping, because they're gonna start getting backlogged with Christmas crap. If you have only one smock, order another, order two more. In a perfect world, your shop will provide you with a smock. If your shop is not one of those shops and you need to provide your own smock, you really need to consider having at least one or two extras, uh, especially if they're on their last thread. What are you gonna do if you have like your zipper rips or like I like the pullover ones and let's say that's starting to come undone. The same thing with grooming pants. And if it's starting to come undone, it's time to get an extra one. And I would strongly suggest that you keep those either in your car or in a locker, wherever you have it in the shop that you can keep it. I know most shops don't have lockers, but that's what we used to call the bins. We would put above the kettles. We would have our name on it. Like, oh, that's your locker. It wasn't a locker. It was a, it was like a, like a tote, like a bin. But at least then we could keep extra stuff there, which I found super helpful because I would leave at least a couple other smocks and things like that. Because let's be honest, if you get soaked in water, like, you know, like those burners that like saturate you, they shake all over you and you're sopping wet head to toe, either that or you get anal glands or a dog poops or pees all over you. And then you've got a spare set. And that just makes the holiday way more merry. There's nothing worse than smelling like dog or cat pee all day and not having a spare smock. Spare smock. Blech. More water. And speaking of spare clothes, I know this sounds really silly, but I, I love my dance goes in the fall and in the winter. That's what I'm wearing when I'm in my grooming van is my black dance goes. You know how your shoes are looking. Do they need to be replaced or need to be replaced shortly? If you're thinking they need to be replaced in the next one to two months, I would just go out and buy another pair. Um, I don't know. If, I don't care if they're sneakers or dance goes or whatever it is. You don't want to be going through this holiday season rushing around in shoes that are falling apart because that is a health hazard. And it's really bad for your back and your knees. You need your back and knees, especially right now. And you let's say you order it again with the Christmas season, you know, the post office, UPS, FedEx, they're at capacity. They may or may not be able to get you your stuff. And if they can't get you your stuff, then you might have a hole in your shoe or have the soles coming undone and not being able to get them. And I would strongly suggest investing in a good pair of shoes. We are on our feet all day. And even those of you guys that are lucky enough to have, you know, a boss that lets you sit to groom, it's still a lot of pressure on our feet and we need good shoes. So, you know, it's always great to have a backup pair. Um, I have a, my shoes are in really great condition. It sounds really weird, but that's because I'm I'm a really bad groomer. I wear flip flops during the summer because I'm in I'm mobile and I do what I want. So that said, don't do that. By the way, don't wear flip flops when you're grooming, like I do. That's bad. But I have my I would say they're they're in pretty good shape. You know, dance goes, and then my older pair are not quite dead, so that is my backup pair. And so let me have another drink, and then let's talk about the truth, okay? Is the shop you work for a shit show or is it a sanctuary? I'd really like to invite you guys to have a respectful conversation with your boss. And these are a few of the topics I want you to talk about. Go ahead and ask them how many dogs or cats they're honestly expecting you to groom. And this comes down to, you'll know. You'll know if your shop is the kind of shop if you've worked there multiple seasons, are they the kind of shop that just buries you in dogs? That just buries you because people keep calling and they don't want to turn away pets. Um, this is especially true if you're working for a salon that is not run by someone who's ever been a groomer. If someone has been a groomer, they could be that veteran groomer that's like, oh, I can groom 15 dogs a day. And you're like, well, I'm a six dog person. So, you know, have an honest, respectful conversation with them. And be honest with how many large dogs you can honestly groom before you start to feel hurt. You know, if you injure yourself, worst case, you know, you'll injure yourself, worst case scenario. 
Your boss doesn't want you to be injured. If you are injured, you can't work. And do not work when you are injured. Do not. That is a great way to have permanent injuries. I know it sounds really kind of dark and morbid, but if you pull your back and you keep lifting dogs, your body is cannot maintain that. Something else is going to give. Um, and you need, you need to have a conversation with your boss about large dogs. I find that the holiday season really was our biggest large dog season because people will have those once a year goldens or they'll want like a Newfoundland and a Bernese Mountain Dog done the day before Christmas and they haven't seen a groomer since the day before Christmas last year. Or maybe if you're lucky, they were groomed last Thanksgiving and then Christmas and they want to do the same thing this year. But that's that could create a lot of physical pain because not only are you going to be lifting heavy dogs, uh, dogs groom once a year are generally not the best behave. They tend to lay down. They tend to lay down on top of you. They tend to buck and act up just because they don't know what the routine is, you know, and doing a lot of brushing is again, really bad for our bodies. Doing a lot of scissoring if they expect you to hand scissor that dog is really bad for your body. So you know your body, you know your limits. And if you're a baby groomer, um, if you're a baby groomer and you've never groomed, this is your first holiday season, first of all, welcome baby groomer. Welcome to, you know, welcome to the Thunderdome, bitch. No, just kidding. Being a groomer is awesome. You'll love it. You'll stay with us forever. But if you're a baby groomer, I would not do more than one to two large dogs per day. If you are doing an average of five dogs, which is very normal for a baby groomer, doing more than five dogs, um, so I would say like tops two dogs, like two big dogs and then three little dogs. That's pretty, that's pretty reasonable. Um, and without being, without sounding weird to your boss, um, I would have a very frank conversation reminding them and making sure that there is workers comp. Not every state requires your employer to have workers comp. I'm going to assume you guys are legal W-2 employees there is almost nowhere where being an independent contractor groomer is legal. If you are a groomer who gets paid under the table, you are really running the risk of getting badly injured and losing your career because you didn't want to pay, you know, probably 10 to 15% taxes because your boss pays the other half. Um, you know, be careful because, you know, if you are an independent contractor, and not a W-2 employee, then you need to have disability insurance as well as TDI, which is temporary disability insurance. If you are a legal W-2 employee, I would have a really respectful but frank conversation with your boss and ask them point blank, do you have workers comp? God forbid I ever get hurt. You know, and that's important because your boss really should, because if you get a dog that throws your back out the season, if you get bit really bad, if you slip and fall, because it's just going to be busier, you know, most places do at least 20% more dogs. And if you work in that salon where they're doing double or triple the amount of dogs, the likelihood of having an injury is so important. You know, it's, it's more likely, it's just more likely. And you need to make sure you're covered. God forbid this happens because you need to make money if you're injured. You know, you, you can't live on candy and fairies while you're not working and you really cannot go back to work injured. And a lot of people assume that th that's what they'll do. And that's a great way to get permanently injured and things not heal well. I know in our early twenties and even some people, their early thirties, they think they'll just bounce back. I will tell you as a groomer who's been grooming well over, well, not well over 10 years, but well yeah, I mean, it, over 10 years, that way I don't age myself too well. You know, I'm in my early 30s and I will tell you, like I have carpal tunnel in both my hands. I'm going to need sh shoulder surgery at some point. Um, you know, my body hurts. My body hurts. And a lot of that is grooming when I should have taken some time and rested. So go ahead and have a conversation with your boss and be clear on the max amount of pets you'll groom and create healthy boundaries with you and your boss. It's so important for you to communicate in a respectful way, but be firm. You know, if you're a maximum a day, like I said, if you're that baby groomer doing five dogs, which would be max one to two big dogs, and then another three small dogs, 
And small dog is relative. I feel like a Cocker Spaniel is as big as I would go. Anything above that to me is a large dog. But, you know, I'm also 5'2". So I want you to really think about that. You know, be clear with them. Be, like, be kind and clear and firm. You know, I can groom no more than this amount of dogs. Please, you know, you're welcome to ask me, but please don't expect me to do this. Okay. And then the next thing I want to talk about is don't be bullied by your clients. You know, make sure you know your shop's policies and know what you are, you know, or are not allowed to enforce. And this might sound a little bit weird, but when it's, you know, you need to know when it's time to call a manager and when it's up to you to deal with it. So if you're the kind of groomer who checks in and out your pets, you know, this is very important. If you're the kind of groomer that just literally sits in the back and you never have to deal with the client, you don't have to worry about this. But if you're the kind of groomer who is checking in and out your dogs or at least checking them in to find out what's going on with the groom, you need to know, like, let's say um, I strongly suggest to my business owners that you should not take in flea dogs during the holidays. As an employee, I know you don't want to deal with flea dogs ever, never mind during the holiday season. So, you know, if let's say this, if the shop is a no flea policy, and you know this because you've read your policies. How can you, how are you supposed to approach that client? And this should be trained already, but I think it's easier to be clear and go through these policies with your boss again in a respectful manner and say to your boss, okay, so if someone comes in and their pet is matted and it has fleas, how would you like me to handle that? Um, as a business owner, unless if I've done the scenario multiple times with my client, I'm sorry, multiple times with my employee and train them, I would rather deal with that, especially during the crazy holiday rush, than have my employee and a customer fighting up front. Because a lot of customers are going to be like, my dog doesn't have fleas, and you can just see them bouncing off the dog. And they're like, yeah, no, that that's fleas, you know, or that's flea dirt. No, 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 that's, you know that's just coffee grinds. And you're like, nope, nope, not. Unless if you like sprinkle coffee grinds all over your pet, that's not what that is. You know, oh, we just must have gotten them in your shop when he walked right in the door. Things like that. Anything they're going to say like that, I as an employee would rather ha hand it to the manager or to your boss because simply put, that's their call. And, you know, sometimes they're going to enforce the policy and sometimes they're going to be like, eh, this is a really good client. Mm, and you're not going to be privy to those things. You're really not. Um, you know, they may have had that client for four years and you just started a year ago. And that client is just such a dynamo client that they're like, this really sucks, but we'll make us, we'll make an exception for you. And so know when they want you to call a manager, call the boss and when you're supposed to do with it. And when in doubt, Remember, it's not your business. You can't make business decisions for your shop. And if your boss is pushing you to do that, you know, you need to create, again, healthy, respectful boundaries. So if my boss is like, oh, use your best judgment, that's a trap. That's a trap. Use your best judgment is a total trap because they're essentially saying, use your best judgment based upon what I perceive as best judgment. Um, again, I don't take flea dogs. If I, someone comes into me and it's the holidays, I'm like, mm -mm, policy is no flea dogs. Peace out. But they may be like, well, did you really think that was appropriate? It's Christmas. Do you want to ruin someone's Christmas? Because they're using their measuring stick to make that decision. Your measuring stick may be totally different. And it's completely inappropriate for them unless if they have taught you where the guardrails are. And would they like the business to be, you know, it makes it impossible. It makes it, you can't win, you know, and you will be thrown under the bus if something bad happens with that client. And I guess that kind of brings me into just don't be bullied by your boss. I know it's easier said than done, but don't let your boss push you around. Um, a great way to do that is go ahead and refresh yourself on what your actual job description is. Um, now I know some of you guys are like, yeah, I don't have a job description. You should have a written job description from your boss. And if you don't have one, I would really ask your boss, say, Hey, and right now it's crazy. It's not going to happen before Thanksgiving, but maybe have a 20, 30 minute meeting 
again with your boss and say, let's write down what my job is and what my job is not. And that's really important. And the reason that's important is because you need to know what your responsibilities are and what they're not. And when they make these giant, vague, blanket statements, like anything I tell you to do, well, that's that's pretty that's pretty broad because they have to train you on whatever your job description is. So if it's my job to do towels, let's say I'm, I'm a groomer and part of my job description is to do towels. Have you been trained how they want towels done? And you would be like, that's really stupid. Anyone can do towels. I should not do towels. Okay, but are they using bleach? Or are they using vinegar? Um, do they double wash them? A lot of shops double wash them. Is it, you know, do you separate, which sounds gross, but do you separate urine, feces, vomit, piss? Like if they're covered in the towels, like do you do that or do you just throw them all in at once? And again, so how your boss wants things done, don't do guesswork. That's a great way to get yelled at and be treated like crap because you're not in your boss's mind to know what they want you to do. And if you're a boss listening right now, you should be doing all these things. And this is what an employee handbook is for. So you can train your staff how you want it done. You know, the other, oh, one second, let me take another drink. And again, I, I don't want to sound, you can do these things in a very respectful way without coming across like a, you know, an unappreciative employee. You know, go to your boss and ask, you know, I would, again, in a very respectful way, go back over how you're paid and, Find out, God forbid, if there are any issues, how are you going to get paid? So for instance, let's say the client is unhappy. Remember we talked about the flea dog client? Oh, uh, you know, you guys don't normally do fleas. And instead of, because you don't normally do fleas, you decide your boss tells you to do a stock of fleas uh, and they didn't charge extra. Well, that's not really fair as an employee, right? Like, isn't there going to be, there's no flea charge, therefore you get paid the same Grooming a dog that's infested with fleas instead of a dog that's not, you know, I wouldn't personally accept that. I would be like, uh, no, no, that's not going to happen to me. But again, it's you can have that conversation in a respectful way. Um, what if the client is unhappy because either you or the client or someone somehow misunderstood the haircut? Um, this happens a lot more than people like to admit. This is the reason that my shop had cameras and a microphone because if somebody says, I had one lady, she literally, you know, it, it, well, I mean, let's be honest. It happens a lot with the husband will drop off the dog and then the wife picks up. And how many times does the husband say a four and then the wife comes in and she won a three eighths comb or, you know, you're like, oh, you know, he keeps getting his ears in the water bowl. Why don't we just take them up? I'm a big fan of like 10 strip poodle ears. Like, I don't know how y'all keep them up. No, thank you. You know, and I'd be like, yeah, you want to take them to the leather, like makes your life a lot simpler. And if you do that and they say yes, and then you come back and they're like, no, no, no I thought it was going to be really furry. Okay. How does that get refunded? So if your boss decides to refund that groom or take a percentage off that groom and you are paid commission, how does that work? Because you did not, you, you know, you, and again, your boss may or may not understand a lot of the legalities of being a boss, your boss can't take money from your paycheck. That's technically a business loss, not an employee's loss. Um, no different than, you know, if you're, it, it's hard to explain, but pretty much your boss can't take money off of your check because they made a business decision to refund a client. And the same thing, what if they completely refund that client? Do you then get nothing? Do you get a little bit of money? How much do you get? And these are things, again, to ask your boss in a respectful, kind-hearted way. Um, and, you know, you know where you work. And I just want to say one thing that I think is so important. Please, 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 please do not let your boss force you to do things that are dangerous. A lot of us have really good hearts and we just want to please our boss and we're just really kind people. Um, if it's dangerous and it's not in your job description, don't do it. Um, I.e., I do. I am not an electrician, so I'm not talking about flipping the switches on. But I am not in the middle of a grooming day 
when there is hair on the floor and it's wet, gonna go and fiddle around with my dryer because it's like not working. Like I am not gonna sit there and play with cords. I'm not gonna put lights on, um, uh, you know, things like that. Don't do that. Like don't, don't put, don't have, if they're like, oh, stand on your table and change that light bulb. No, because if I fall off my table, that's not my job description. And it's gonna be a lot harder for you to get workers comp because you're being an idiot climbing on a grooming table. I mean, that's, that's what you're, that's what the insurance company is going to be like. Well, that's, you know, that's just people being stupid. Even if your boss told you, your boss wouldn't tell the insurance company, no, no, no. I totally told her to climb on the table and, you know, totally be OSHA incompliant. And the same thing goes for, you know, grooming. Don't groom an aggressive dog or a dog too big for you that is going to damage you or harm you. Um, I am a cat groomer. I'm a certified feline master groomer. I don't take cat grooming lightly. I find it really easy, but I paid a lot of money and I did a lot of training to make it easy. That's very important to point out. If you don't know anything about cat grooming and your boss has decided during the holidays when you're going to learn how to groom cats, or if you are in the kind of shop where they don't, know what they're doing with cats and they're like hey just just like hold this cat while we trim the nails that's up to you uh, a cat bite can end your career a cat scratch can put you in the hospital um don't take cat grooming lightly either you know if they're not willing to invest in learning from a company like the national cat groomers institute on how to properly groom cats i wouldn't touch it i wouldn't i wouldn't it's not worth it you know it's not worth a career ending bite you know, for, for that reason, it's just not. Um, and the same thing with a very, very large dog. You know, I'm little, I'm five, I say I'm five, two, but I'm really five, one. And, you know, I remember, you know, I worked at PetSmart and I had a great Dane, like was doing really, really great. And then the dog lost his shit and he jumped out of the tub. He ripped the tub off the wall and then knocked an entire thing of cage banks on top of me. There was no hope if that dog got upset of me being able to contain that dog by myself. Um, and so I encourage you, if especially if you're grooming alone. I wasn't grooming alone alone, but there was no one available if things went south. Don't do things that could potentially end your career. Thankfully, that didn't end my career, but it was really eye-opening because you know, we, we put the dogs in, they can't jump out because the lead's too small. Well, that's great, except shit happens. You know, the leads half snap, but don't snap all the way. All these awful things can happen that we don't even think about. You know, and just remember, no job is worth the career ending bite. No job is worth a fractured back or even an emotional breakdown. I mean, if your boss is kind of boss that like berates you, and tells you to do things and just shits all over you. No job's worth that. No job's worth the mental breakdown. If you got to stick it out through the end of the year, you got to do what you got to do, but take every money you can and get the fuck out because you can't, you can't live that way. That's awful. And I've, I've been on both sides. I've been the employee who was treated verbally terrible. And then I've been the really frustrated boss and I'm not proud to admit it. I used to yell at employees when I first opened my business, because I was like, why can't you do this? And it's because I didn't train them how to do it. Like I had completely unrealistic expectations of them and then got super mad at them, you know, but you have to live and learn. And unfortunately, you know, you've got to be taught somehow, you know, I got taught somehow. I'm like, wow, I can't keep employees. And so I had to learn how to be a good boss to keep my employees and make my employees happy. But, you know, hopefully, you know, little employees here, you can learn that before you open up your own business. Or just teach your bosses by not letting them completely run over you. Now, I will say, I don't want to make this so important. If your boss is awesome, if the shop you work for is awesome, please give them thanks. You know, be appreciative of your boss and your coworkers. Even if it's not the best place, coming from a place of gratitude is so important. Be thankful for your boss. Um, sorry, it's your news. You know, are you guys going to do anything for the holiday, whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas? You know, go ahead and ask them how you can help. 
you know, how can you can show your gratitude for such awesome people around you? We always did uh, the day before Thanksgiving, you know, I would tell them, what do you want? Like, and it was generally fast food because what else would you order? Whatever you guys want, I will order for you guys. And that's what we did. We would order either pizza or one year we got Taco Bell. I mean, we got like $100 worth of Taco Bell, which was like a mountain food, you know. And again, that's not your job as an employee. But what might be your, you know, position is, hey, can I bring the plates? Hey, can I bring some, a bottle of Sprite and some, you know, cups? You know, doing something a little bit like that will really help your boss know that you appreciate what they're doing. I'm not saying go buy everyone lunch. You don't have to do that. But just something small. I mean, offer to bring the plates. I mean, you can get a whole stack at the dollar store and not use it for three years. Trust me, been there, done that. Um, and if you have a really awesome boss, seriously, consider writing a handwritten note because no one does it anymore. And tell your boss, you know, maybe how much you appreciate your job and, you know, that you appreciate that they gave you your job you know, and how you're continue to honor their sacrifice, you know, into the next year. And I think what's interesting in the grooming industry is we never really talk about our bosses in an appreciative way. Um, a lot of times we forget that our bosses give up a lot to own their own shop. They really do. And if they're mobile and they have multiple vans, they've given up a lot. They've like potentially sacrificed a lot to open up their own business. Um, and sometimes it was really interesting because, you know, people would always assume that when I owned my shop that I was like some sort of rich bitch. Like I was like, oh, you know, River like owns her own shop and like da 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 da. And like, oh, she buys like a Prima bathing system, which was like two grand. Oh, she buys this. Like she's just spending money. But it was so interesting is like these employees acted like spoiled rats and they didn't understand. They just saw, they saw, you know, they saw the success. They didn't see the suffering. Like as some of you guys may know, I opened my shop four days before my son was born. Um, I literally opened it on a $10,000 credit card, which is the worst way to open a shop. Please do not do that. Please learn from my mistakes. But, you know, I lived with my son there illegally in that shop for six months because we were so poor. And then I worked you know, 60 to 80 hours a week growing that business. You know, I was always either if I wasn't grooming, then I was marketing. If I wasn't marketing, I mean, I literally go for every, I would take a business cards and pamphlets and go to every single veterinarian. I'd go to other grooming salons and be like, Hey, let's create connections. That way we can share, you know, cause some, some groomers want to do something, some don't you know, let's find like clients you don't want and maybe I want and things like that. You know, I, I did marketing. I had to like paint and renovate. There was always something new to do. And they didn't see that. Like my employees didn't see all of that sacrifice. They only saw when I was successful. And it was really hard as a boss to be treated like a piece of shit when I gave up a lot in order to build a business that I then could employ people. And I think as an employee, you really should consider just telling your boss that you appreciate it, even if they're assholes, because that's the truth. Some groom, a lot of groomer owners are assholes because they're really bitter. They're tired. They're tired. They've been built. They've been building this business for years and they're tired. They would like a break, you know, but knowing that you appreciate that they have sacrificed and now they have this amazing job. Even if it's only a mediocre job, it's still better than going out and getting a loan for 20, 30, 50, $100,000 to go out on your own to potentially lose money. As an employee, when you go to work, you always make money. And that's, that's a blessing. So appreciate your boss a little bit, even if they're not perfect, because no one's perfect. So another way to get through the holiday rush this year as an employee is to start your plan for 2020. And I'm not talking about getting the details done. I'm not talking about that. I just want you to think about the big picture for next year. And honestly, the reason for that is, is because it's a lot easier to get through the tough times when you have a goal. 
when you are looking at what you're going to be able to do and what you're going to be able to accomplish next year and looking forward to all that positive stuff. You know, right now, it's probably really hard. You're tired. You're stressed out. You know, you need a sandwich or something because you don't even remember the last time you ate when you were at work. You know, you need water or, you know, like 30 cans of Red Bull, whatever your flavor. So I get it. But start thinking about next year. You know, next year, you're going to start seri getting serious about opening your own place. Are you going to start saving for your grooming van? How about getting your personal finances under control? You know, and uh, don't be afraid to sign up for personal finance on a leash. You know, are you going to go to a trade show or two? I'm personally going to be going to at least a few. I haven't decided exactly how many. So if you're going to be going to a couple of trade shows, I'd love to hear which ones. And maybe we can meet up while we're there. That'd be nice. You know, maybe you're going to start watching some online classes or webinars. Um, I really enjoy learn to groom dogs.com. I don't groom dogs anymore, but when I did, I loved that I could have that in the background and I liked hearing all of that. Um, like I said, I'm a feeling master groomer and because of that, I have been able, like I, I can sometimes listen to in the background, my online courses, they're really nice. Webinars are great, especially the free ones who doesn't love free shit you know, go ahead and listen to it, but make the time to do it and say, okay, I'm really going to start learning more, exploring more, maybe listen to more books. Well, I listen to books. I listen to a lot of audiobooks, podcasts, um, or even, you know, reading, reading, although my eyes are so tired to read sometimes. Um, maybe this year you're going to hire a business coach. And I know you guys are employees, but part, if you're going to start a business, I would strongly suggest hiring a business coach because if you're going to start a business, you need to know how to start it right. It's a lot more expensive to start a business. I'm sorry. It's a lot more expensive to hire someone to fix all your problems than it is to hire someone off the bat in order to grow your business. I will also say that I'm going to be having a Black Friday sale. I have not announced it, but if you are interested and you're watching this live, feel free to message me about it because it's a really good deal for the business coaching. Um, and that is on my four, my four, well, it's really a four session, my six month or my one year. It's going to be a really good sale. Um, okay. So if you don't look at the big picture today, it's a lot harder to get through everything. Like we said, um, I, f I found a lot of times doing this, you guys know how good a roller country I am, that if I didn't do this, I really just, like, especially right before Thanksgiving, because my birthday, I would have my birthday, and then I would have Thanksgiving, and then I would just be through this, all this chaos. I'm like, I just want to lay down and cry into, like, a ball of, like, once your golden hair that's, like, been shaved, and it's just, like, you just use it as a pillow. You're like, I'm just going to lie here and die, because it's exhausting the whole season is exhausting, you know, and I will say in a non braggy way that having the way my business is set up, my, I'm really not much busier. Some of my clients want extra baths, but for the most part, my clients are all regular. So it's easy to fit everybody in for, I don't miss the chaos of having the shop. And I do think that different business models have different ways of dealing with it. So go ahead and give yourself some grace, you know, try your best to give everyone else some grace. And what grace really is, is forgiveness without earning it. You know, everyone's probably going to drive you nuts, but plan for it. Have some sort of affirmation, incantation, you know, however you want to consider it. And I'm going to like give you a little bit of a secret. So I always say really mean things in my head because that's who I am. I'm just a very, actually a very mean person, right? No. Um, so what I will generally say in my head, obviously, is bitch, you don't deserve how nice I'm being, but I'll do it anyway. That's what I say to myself. Because this person, like if it's a client or, you know, even your boss, if your boss is like losing their fucking chicken nuggets or like, boo, like they're just being crazy. Just stop and think to yourself, why are they being crazy? They're probably being crazy because they know business is going to drop off in January and February. 
They have the pressure of owning a business. They have the pressure of being financially responsible for not just their own life, their own business, but you guys as, as employees, they're responsible for keeping food on your table. That's a lot of pressure. So if your boss is going crazy, they're either crazy or they don't know how to handle the pressure of all of that, which is pretty normal because we're only human, you know? And, you know, like I said, you know, try to smile when you say things like that in your head because then, you know, you won't feel yourself biting down hard in your tongue or feel your eye twitching because you're going to have days when you just want to blow your brains out, but don't, you know, I'm like 1-800-SUICIDE-PREVENTION. Don't do that. You know, this is why it's important to have something to look forward to. Create small goals, little rewards. What makes sense? What makes you happy? Um, I'm a big sucker for Thin Mints, which are Girl Scout cookies. Um, I'll eat a whole sleeve. I, I, yeah. I also like Ritz crackers. Maybe I like things in sleeves. Like, legit. Like, I love Ritz crackers. I'll just sit there and mow down like an entire box in the most like disgusting way. Like I love them so much, but go ahead and treat yourself probably something better like chocolate, thin mints, rich crackers. I actually probably would do a lot for, you know, or, you know, say to yourself, okay, if I do really well, I'm going to go and take myself out somewhere. Get yourself. I well, it's a little cold right now for ice cream, but figure out what it is that motivates you and then go ahead and add that as a little carrot for yourself. Make sure you're doing massages, you're getting to your chiropractor, acupuncture, whatever it is. I really strongly suggest in a perfect world, you are booking these on your days off. And that's pretty much because I don't want you to like go to work, go get a massage and then sleep through when you actually feel really good. So uh, let's say my, my back, right? right now my back does hurt. And I need a massage. If I get a massage like right after work and then I go to sleep, I feel like like, you know, when you, you get that like probably like three hours of feeling really, really, really good after a massage, I would really appreciate if that could actually just, you know, if I could be awake for that, that'd be really nice. So consider doing that on your day off instead of doing it after work. Um, and for those of you guys who are like, I can't afford that, blah, blah, blah. Bitch, I know how much you get in tips. I just did seven days where people were saving up $60, $400. This is the time of year for tips. Take your tips, you know, go to Massage Envy or something. It's $55 for your first massage. Go get a massage. And even if they just sit there and rub your head and tell you you're pretty, it's going to make you feel better. All right, guys. So it has been an awesome live. I'm here. Do you guys have any questions? Feel free to type them into the chat box. You know, as always, I really appreciate everyone being here. Please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting on this video. Um, I will always, I'm going to send this to my editor tonight, and then we will have the edited version up, generally have them up by Fridays. And again, like, subscribe, do that. And that's simply because in order to pay that, you know, pay that editor, we need to either get this place monetized or something like that. You know, editors are about $700 a month, which is, you know, pretty crazy. But at the same time, I could definitely make more grooming than editing videos because it just takes so much time. You know, I really appreciate everyone being here. If you haven't already, check out my website, which is SavvyGroomer.com. You know, like me. I'm sorry, go ahead to my uh, the Facebook page, which is Facebook.com slash Grow Wealthy Grooming. Go ahead and like that. You'll get lots of updates right there. Um, if you, yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm so done. I got another interview to do after this. I need like a, I need a nap. I need a nap. But thank you guys for being here so much. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you guys next week here at 7 p.m. Eastern time, Mondays. Grow Wealthy Grooming. Happy grooming, guys. End stream. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mwah, mwah.